Well, uh, really proud of my team tonight. Uh, this was a terrific win for us against a terrific team. Um, and I knew this was going to be a tough game because of the respect I have for Coach Beeline. When you play a defense like we played, and we just played them eight days ago, you know, I knew that after them studying film and with his mind, it was going to really put a lot of pressure on our defense tonight because they were going to be ready for it because they'd seen it. You know, sometimes teams that haven't played against our zone, it takes them a little while to figure out kind of where the holes are. And, you know, obviously Michigan was ready. They got off to a great start. They were moving the ball, making shots. And I just loved how we hung in there. Um, you know, I thought, you know, for us to hold them to 20 points in the second half, 52 overall, um, you know, to play that team to in a spit twice in a span of a week and hold them to 58 and 52 points uh, just makes me really proud of the defense, the fight. Um, you know, I know there's so much wrong with us and it's a disastrous season and everybody's writing our obituaries and it's a lot of fun, but I'm not sure I'm quite seeing that at six and six, 15 and 10. So really proud of my guys. They, they love playing and um, we're just gonna try to keep it going. You know, we got another big game against Maryland on Saturday. Chris, you talked about the defense. John just said they had a plan coming in. You adapted to their plan, and they couldn't adapt back. And that's yeah. as far as he would go. What was their plan, and, and what were your adaptions? Well, I mean, it was obvious they were moving the ball very quickly. You know, when you play a defense the way we do, um, you know, it requires talk, it requires communication. And I thought their pace, you know, I thought they were getting the ball up the floor. I thought they were moving it quickly. And, you know, we tried to make a few adjustments to slow them down a little bit. You know, obviously, when guys get a little tired, that, that tends to happen as well. Um, but again, it was hard because they put you in a lot of tough spots, especially with Wagner's ability to step out and make shots and pass and, and be a playmaker. So um, it was a constant kind of trying to adjust to the things they were doing that were putting us in a tough spot and give our guys a lot of credit because you can't, this isn't football. I can't, I can't huddle them up after every play and say, this is what they're doing. You know, you gotta, you gotta figure it out on the fly. And our guys did a really good job, I think, adjusting as the game went on to the things they were trying to do to us. Are they feeding off of, or maybe you're strategically using as motivation the idea of being written off? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I just, I mean, I never get too high or never get too low. I really don't. You guys know that. I mean, I've, I've been in this thing since I was a little kid. I mean, my father was a professional athlete. You, you have to have thick skin. Like, you got to know, you know, when things are good, it's not is going to be as good as they tell you. And when things are not so going, it's going to be worse. And that's just kind of the nature of how things are. So, um, hopefully they'll use it as fire. I mean, I, you know, I think it's amusing that we're 500 in the league and 15 and 10, and it's a disaster of a season. You know, I just think it's funny. Um, not sure how many Northwestern teams have been six and six after 12 games in the Big Ten in the program's history. So um, it's it's quite a disaster that that is going on this year. And you know, we just we're going to keep playing. I know we're dead. I know we're bad. I know we have all these problems, and but we're just going to keep playing the rest of our games and see what happens. Emac really took over down the stretch. That's something we've seen from him a lot in past seasons, maybe not as much this year. Was it sort of a vintage performance, you thought, from, from him? Yeah, I thought he was great. You know, the thing that I – look, he cares so much. He's meant so much to our program. He, he – the legacy he's left here to help be a major cog along with Scotty and Vic and Gavin and Derek, all these guys, you know, what they've done to help elevate our program, you know, to the point where 15 and 10 is considered a disaster. I mean, that's something they've done. So because they've they've done it, they've been out there and BMAC cares. And so, you know, he puts pressure on himself as as you would do, you know, human nature wise. And I think what happens at those times is he loses some of that joy of just playing basketball and having fun. And the thing I've talked about with him this last last month of his career here playing is like just just go back to being that little kid playing ball, having fun, playing with passion, playing with joy. And, and let's see where it takes us. And I just, that was the thing that made me the most happy. I saw smiles on his face. You know, I saw him interacting. And, and when you do that, it's funny how you start playing better. Chris, are you starting to sense some of the consistency coming around that the team needs? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're playing pretty well. You know, I obviously for us at times, our offense gets stagnant. You know, points have been hard to come by at times, but I think we've strung together now, what, four or five pretty good defensive performances. 
you know, the, the, the zone has given us some life. It's, it was something new. Um, our guys really believe in it. They're, they're confident in it. And we have to continue to get better with it because coaches are so good in this league. And the more film you get and the more you see, coaches are going to you know, come up with things to try to find the holes in the sweet spots. So we have to continue to improve on that end. I thought our rebounding was really good. We got hurt with that on, at Wisconsin the other night. But we've strung together now. I mean, even the Michigan game we lost last week. I mean, we, I thought we played pretty well. We just we couldn't score. And, and that's what did us in. So um, I feel like we're playing pretty good basketball, um, in my opinion, from what I see. I like the, I like the fight in our guys. Um, they look like a team that, you know, this time of year, you guys know this, you guys cover basketball a lot. You know, teams right now, you see a lot of teams that want to kind of crank it up and make a push. And then you see a lot of teams that maybe are counting down to the days for the season to end. And we've talked about that with our guys. Like, what do we want to be? Do we want to be a team that is counting down the days? Or do we want a team to, uh, to make a push? And we actually used Michigan's team as an example from last year. You know, as I was studying in the game, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think last year after the 11th game, I think Michigan was five and six in, in the league. And, you know, you, everyone saw what they did. They became the hottest team in our conference. They won like five or six of their last eight. They won the Big Ten tournament. They went to the NCAA tournament, won two games, had a shot in the air by Walton to go to the Elite Eight. So it's a lot of basketball to be played. And by no means do we feel we've arrived. Um, but I, I like where we're at. I think we're getting confident. I think guys are enjoying playing together and we're finding kind of an identity. And we got a, you know, a lot of tough games ahead of us, especially two more road games coming up. You had uh, 16 turnovers last time against Michigan, six tonight, you yeah. had two in the first half. What, what do you attribute that to? Yeah, I mean, I just thought we were, we were very careless with the ball last week when we played them, and we really watched a lot of film because we felt like the turnovers is what did us in because not only were they turnovers, but they led to their transition game the last game we played those guys last week. So having kind of the extended time, you know, we had four days to prepare for these guys. Uh, we, w we really studied that game, especially what we did offensively. The ball was sticking, you know, they, the ball wasn't moving. We were getting ourselves in tough spots and we were making careless decisions. And I thought tonight we did a much better job taking care of the ball and, and, and getting very good shots at the basket. Even early, I thought we got good shots. We just weren't shooting well. Which obviously had a plan for the zone early that, that worked pretty well, but I guess can you speak to any of the in-game adjustments you guys made, or was it simply not turning it over? No, like we that? had to adjust a little bit. I mean, I mean, Coach Beeline, he's he's terrific offensive mind. I mean, I knew that. I mean, we, I, I was not foolish enough to realize, think that they were just going to do what they did last time. I mean, they they were going to make adjustments. They were going to try to put us in spots where we were going to have a hard time. They hurt us early. Um, the pace was really good. I thought their pace, the way they were moving the ball, cutting sharply, um, you know, and then uh, throughout the course of the game, we started to adjust a little bit what they were trying to do, um, and you know, you just do your best. I mean, I was again, I was saying earlier before you got here, like it's not football. I can't huddle the guys after every play and say this is what they're doing. So give our guys a lot of credit on like getting making the adjustments on the fly, you know, while the game was going on. Line like Michigan was down the stretch. Does it change anything for you guys defensively? Do you feel like you maybe be more aggressive or? Well, I mean, maybe a little bit. I know there's some of their guys were struggling. I mean, our main point of emphasis was we didn't, especially in the zone. You know, the three guys that we didn't want to get give three pointers up were Rockman, Wagner, and Duncan. You know, and you know, again, not that those other guys can't make shots, but there was a heavy emphasis on trying to know where those guys were at all time. Now, uh, Mo hurt us in the paint because he's really good. But I thought overall from three, um, you know, we did a really good job. Would they make five threes in the game, you know, which is such a big part of what they do. And, you know, we, we did say, though, with some of those guys, I mean, that's scouting. If, if a guy has a, a wide open layup, you know, don't give up a wide open layup. Try to, try to make them earn it on the line a little bit.